Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the final confirmation of a star system where we believe there was a major planetary collision approximately 200,000 years ago. The confirmation that came from the recent study, that as always you can find in the description below, that used an extremely specific observations from various types of gas orbiting in that star system in order to determine exactly what happened there approximately 200,000 years ago. Before we talk about the study, let's also briefly discuss the idea of planetary collisions, but also discuss the evolution of planetary systems and the growth of the protoplanetary disk. Because in some sense, all of this is actually connected. So first of all, where exactly is this coming from and what exactly is this star system? So approximately 11 years ago, back in 2009, some of the scientists observing this certain star system, known as HD172555, realized that the star system contained some extremely unusual dust particles, suggesting that something really major occurred here. Now, one of the potential explanations, as you can see in this simulation right here, was essentially a very large planetary collision between two relatively large planets, with other explanations involving unusual comets, unusual asteroids, and potentially some other protoplanetary disk effects that could form unusual dust particles that seem to be much smaller in size than in a typical protoplanetary disk, at least compared to some of the other protoplanetary disks that the scientists have studied so far. So for example, the dust here seemed to be much, much smaller. It also seemed to contain a lot of different silicates and quite a lot of different silicate monoxide, with all this suggesting that something major is happening in the star system. So either some sort of a collision that recently occurred or potentially some really extreme effects coming from the comets and the asteroids. But naturally, none of this was definitive and nobody really knew back then how to sort of prove or disprove any of this. But because this star system is also relatively young, it's only about 23 million years old, it means that a lot of things could have happened here to cause these particular effects. And so the scientists just wanted to work out what exactly created these unusual dust particles and a lot of the composition in the disk. But I guess first of all, it's also important to understand how a lot of the formation happens in the early star systems in order to create larger objects such as planets. So for example, we know that initially, when the star system is extremely young and when the star itself is not actually even producing any fusion yet, most of the material in the disk is just these really, really tiny particles, micron-sized particles, that are slowly coalescing together. Although during these initial stages, because of the rubbing between the particles, the actual reason why they stick together is actually electromagnetic in nature. It's because of the static electricity. Because of the static, the particles start to grow larger and larger, and once they reach sizes of just a few grams, they start interacting even more, producing other electromagnetic effects, including magnetic fields that grow in power even more, eventually attracting even more particles and guiding them around. And at some point, approximately a few million years after the original formation, this whole system starts to be dominated by electromagnetic forces and quite a lot of magnetism. The gravity in this case does not play a very big role just yet. However, sometime later, once the chunks become large enough, the actual particles start to accumulate into large enough pieces where the gravity starts to play a bigger role. And that's when things start to coalesce quite dramatically. Larger chunks produce even larger chunks, they also end up producing even more electromagnetic forces and produce these very powerful magnetic lines that end up guiding a lot of mass into the object itself. And eventually all of this leads to a dramatic burst in growth of planets and the star itself. And once the disk clears, that's when the gravity takes over. At this point, the larger objects, usually size of a typical planetoid, so for example, an object like Ceres, will start colliding with one another, forming larger and larger planetoids, and eventually planets. Now, all of this obviously lasts for a few million years, but during this time there are quite a lot of different collisions. And today we believe that quite a lot of these collisions obviously occurred in the solar system as well. I guess the most famous one was the collision between early Earth and an object known as Theia that ended up creating modern Earth and, of course, our own moon. This is the simulation that was originally created back in 2012. But obviously a lot of planets received a lot of these collisions. Mars did as well because it seems to have a very, very flattened north compared to some of the other parts, with one of the biggest known collisions in the solar system very likely being the one between Uranus and an object that was most likely a little bit more massive than planet Earth. That's the collision that ended up sort of shifting Uranus to the side and also created some really unusual parameters inside the planet itself. 
So here, this is what most likely caused all of these unusual phenomena. But despite the relative frequency of these collisions in the early solar system, and also despite the predictions suggesting that these collisions should be very frequent in many of these early star systems, surprisingly of all of the different star systems we've studied so far, only one seems to actually have signs of a potential collision about 200,000 years ago. And even here, the scientists weren't really certain until now. So first of all, because this star system is not as far as some of the other ones, it's only about 95 light years away from us, it becomes a little bit easier for the scientists to analyze what happens in the star system, and a lot more detail is obviously visible. And so by using some of the modern telescopes, specifically the ALMA telescope located in Chile, the scientists in this paper discovered something else about the star system that allowed them to make more sense of what happened here before. They found a large amount of what's known as carbon monoxide. Mostly because this compound is relatively easy to see and is usually extremely bright in a lot of different surveys. And to their surprise, they've discovered quite a large amount of carbon monoxide located in the inner part of the star system. All of this located about 6 to 9 astronomical units away from the star. So kind of like where we usually find planets like Jupiter and Saturn. But the thing is, it would be somewhat unusual to have so much carbon monoxide so close to the star. And the reason for this is that carbon monoxide actually breaks down really, really fast. As a matter of fact, within just a million years, all of this gas should have been already broken apart and turned into something entirely different. And so the explanation in this case is that the gas very likely formed or appeared in this region relatively recently. And then when they tried to estimate the total mass of the gas present here, they realized it's actually only about 20% higher than the total amount of carbon monoxide present in the atmosphere of Venus. And on top of this, a lot of dust here was also made of silicates. And so the combination of silicates and carbon monoxide suggested that it probably came from some sort of a planet. Moreover, it very likely came from a planet relatively recently. And so the only logical explanation for how so much gas would appear in this early star system and how it was still there and not really destroyed by the star yet is really because it happened relatively recently and it was probably a result of a major collision. And probably a result of a collision that happened 200,000 years ago between some sort of a rocky Earth-sized planet and a slightly smaller body very similar to Venus or possibly even Mars. So in some sense this is actually kind of similar to what happened to early Earth as well. In this case the collision was at a speed of about 10 kilometers per second and it's kind of similar to what you're about to see in this simulation in Universe Sandbox. So that's probably what happened in this particular case. With the collision then emitting a tremendous amount of silicates spreading it across the entire star system, but also stripping the early planet of a very large part of the early atmosphere, which was carbon monoxide. So basically this collision sort of removed a lot of the surface and a lot of the atmosphere, leaving behind something similar to what you see here a very, very hot bowl of lava. And according to the scientists in the paper, this particular scenario right now explains everything that we observe in the star system. So basically, no other explanation right now explains the carbon monoxide, explains the tiny grains, or the actual silicates present in the protoplanetary disk, with the collision essentially making the most sense. And obviously, if the scientists in this paper are correct, this also presents a lot of opportunities for us to study other star systems. First of all, this is a first official confirmation of the atmosphere being stripped from another planet by an actual collision. So that's something to consider when looking for other collisions somewhere in other star systems. Similarly, by detecting the specific gas that was detected in the star system, we can now use this to try to find similar signs in some of the other early star systems. In other words, this particular study gives other scientists something very specific they can look for in order to find other collisions in other star systems. But I guess more importantly, this might actually help us understand why the planetary collisions seem to be so much more rare than we originally anticipated. Currently, the scientists believe they should be much more frequent. But so far, this is not what the scientists are seeing, and the collisions seem to be much more rare. So because of this study, we might be able to finally answer this mystery. Maybe the collisions are rare, and maybe the initial formation in the star system entirely depends on electromagnetic forces and not really collisions. Maybe collisions are actually extremely rare. So this is definitely something the scientists will be exploring in the next few years. And also, hopefully, in one of the future studies, and also using some of the newer telescopes, such as maybe the James Webb Telescope, 
we might be able to also see the surface of this particular planet and find out what's happening there right now. If this collision happened 200,000 years ago, we might actually be able to see the effects on the surface, which might help us understand what happened to early Earth when Theia collided with Earth creating the Moon. And so all of this is actually super exciting and will help us understand the evolution of planets and the evolution of various star systems. But I guess until we learn something else, or until something else is discovered about this particular system, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful personal t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.